Hey there everybody, thanks for joining me for another one man review. Today I'll be looking at the Carmen line by Mitsuhashi Kotaro. This is a absolutely gorgeous little book from Glacier Bay Books. You can see it's got these like little foil elements on it. It's just really delicate and sophisticated design wise. And that carries throughout the art in the book. The artist Mitsuhashi Kotaro seems to be a graphic designer by day and a comic artist by night. That's what's mentioned in the book. So what Glacier Bay does that I think just deserves all of the praise in the world and all of the financial support that we can throw their way is they're translating and bringing over indie manga, independently published manga, which is something that given what we get over here, you know, the Katancha, the Viz, the stuff from Seven Seas and Dark Horse, you know, we're getting the big stuff. And so you almost get the impression that there's not an indie scene, right? Because we're just not exposed to it. And Glacier Bay is like exposing the indie scene and translating it. And I think that's just so amazing because it's like, oh my God, there's like a whole set of Japanese artists that would fall more into like the fanographics category. And we're, we're just not seeing them. Like this doesn't even look like a manga to me. The, the way that cartooning and the abstraction goes seems very much... Um, like something that drawn quarterly or fanographics or even a lot of the new European stuff I'm seeing. I think Antoine Koss, who I didn't like his stories, but I really liked his art. This feels like a kind of fulfillment of what I saw in there. So this is really, really fascinating to me. I think Glacier Bay is doing great things. I saw this artist stuff first in their anthology, Glaeolia number three. Glacier Bay is currently doing crowdfunding for a reprint of Glaeolia number one. Hopefully I can get this video up before that ends because it's only got a couple days left at the time I'm uh, recording this. And they need they need a, like a couple thousand dollars more to hit their goal to get Glaeolia 1 reprinted. And that's what it is. It's a collection of this kind of stuff. So I think that's a really important project and I think this is a really important publisher. So I'm going to rush to get this video out because I hope that you guys go support that. I'll put a link to that campaign um, to get Glaeolia number one reprinted. And and trust me, I number three is amazing. And I'll, I'll be going through a bunch of Glacier Bay books. I ordered a bunch of stuff from them. So this one here is a bunch of short stories um, done, done by Kotaro. And they're all just very whimsical and magical. And they're all printed in this like dark blue, which is cool because they reference a world of blue stretched out in every direction. And he explains in the back that the Carmen line is the point that's 100 miles above sea level. And that's the point with, with where you're officially like crossing out of our atmosphere into space. And so this world of blue stretching everywhere. And this idea of these liminal kind of dream spaces right throughout all the short stories in the book. Um, I don't want to give away too much because I would say go buy this book. Absolutely. But I'll show you just a little, like one little bit that I like from each each story, I guess. So here's there's just this total sense of whimsy. They're talking about ways that you can like travel into other places. And they're describing um, the when a total eclipse happens, when a total solar eclipse happens, you're going to get this line of light. And if you step into the, sh the shadow uh, cast by the moon, the interior of that ring becomes like liquid and turns into a bottomless spring and you, you can sink into it. So there's just these really beautiful moments of like whimsy and fantasy in the book. And they're, they're illustrated so simply. Like in my mind, if I was like, okay, I got to draw someone stepping into a portal that's created by the shadow of the moon, I would be thinking, oh my God, this is complicated. I don't know how to visualize this. And uh, Kotaro just keeps coming up with these very simple ways to show these extremely magical instances. And that's that's just inspiring so much to me. Um, and this is also a combination of some tricks I've been playing with, with like uh, screen toning over ink washes in Photoshop, trying to draw more simply, focusing more on shape, less on line. So it's speaking to a lot of things that I'm really enjoying right now and trying to pull off in my own work and just the design aspects of it. You can see he's a graphic designer. He thinks simple in shapes and in design. So I'm trying to learn a lot from flipping through this. This one's all in in line. This is called Night and Voice, this story. And this story is pretty much about a father who asks, who makes his kid promise to take care of a plant for him. Um, th this one's a bit strange to see in line. Kataro's definitely uh, more effective with the ink washes. It's good with the pen and ink, but just much more effective with this look here. 
This is called the Blue Moment. And here they're going out um, over a big, big hole that has opened up. Let's see. Oh, no, that's in another story. Sorry. Sorry, I got the next story in this one mixed up. In this one, a, a character catches a ride on, on, on a boat out to a bar that's out on the water. Uh, and he's drinking a very special uh, drink that's moonlight water and moonlight water and here you can see the whimsy again it's going out and getting water right from where the moon is reflecting on it and then they mix a couple extra things in there and he has this this amazing drink so that's kind of the the little short story again stepping into this like magical mystical place and here we have some real cool like dry brush or crayon techniques going on that when translated into the the monochrome with this with this spot ink that they're using to print the blues uh, just God, that looks really amazing. That kind of look. Here's a uh, here's the story I thought I was looking at. This is Dream of Sand. So they take there's this uh, old abandoned river that had dried out and made all of this cracked earth, and then they take a boat out over it because now it's filled back up with some water again. And there's a big here. I'll show another uh, image from that. Oops. I'll show another image from that story. There's a big hole that they go out, and they here's the dry desert. And then they, they go out and they go over this big hole. There's also a sub story in here that's really fun. But this giant pit of quicksand that's now become like a sinkhole, it looks like. And that filled with water and they're riding over it. And that's another one of those. Like if someone told me I had to draw that, I'd be like, oh my god, this is going to be so hard. But coming at it from an abstract design standpoint, like this is a really elegant solution that wasn't like, oh my god, this is an impossible amount of work. It's just... I would never make those design decisions. So that's what I'm saying. I'm trying and look at this. What an image. It's amazing. Beautiful stuff. So just trying to learn from that. This one's called Half Star, Half Sky. This is a really, really short little story. It's just like three pages. But again, you can see the amazing art, the amazing sense of design and composition. Just some of the ability to render phenomena really simple. That kind of reminds me of John McNaught. Uh, how he renders phenomenon with just like a couple shapes. This story is called Intermodulation. And it's about the crashing of the Titanic, a violin player that was on the Titanic. That one's pretty short. Specimen Room of Existence. This is the last one, and it's probably my favorite in the book. It's one of the longer ones. It's got all of the kind of effects that I've been messing with in the last couple weeks that, uh, you know, I'm looking at this now and trying to learn even more from it, how to make this effective. But what an image. And this is a kid that's given a snow globe and he's like shaking the snow globe. And then he realizes that uh, this town at my feet, for which it is already too late, has its sky and its earth inverted. And then he's realized, oh, that's because I'm picking it up and shaking it. But God, that's such a good image. Uh, and then here you get another really beautiful image. And if I remember correct, this is the one that's in Gleolia 3, or at least part of it. I feel like I've seen this image, this this page before. But look at that. Just those glow effects and stuff. There's so much like color and life to this, even though it's monochromatic, which is coming from the use of value and shape. It's just absolutely gorgeous stuff. So... I cannot recommend this book more. I cannot recommend this artist more. And I, I cannot recommend Glacier Bay more. Like I said, please go support the Glaeolia. They need a couple thousand dollars more to make that reprint happen. And it's definitely a book that needs to be reprinted and deserves to be reprinted. And these artists are doing some really amazing things. So I, I really, really, really believe in like the mission of what Glacier Bay is doing. So I hope you guys support them. Uh, also, if you enjoy what we're doing here on the channel and you want to support us, the best ways to do that are through our Patreon. That's great. We have a couple tiers there that have some voting rights assigned to them and some contests that you can win and whatnot. Uh, we're going to start put. I'm going to start putting up some exclusive comics on there as well. There's a there's another experiment with the AI that I'm going to run that's a link to the abolition of man. So that's on there as well. So definitely get on the Patreon if you can. That money helps us buy the books that, that we review. And then the best thing to do is support what Sean's doing with Living the Line Publishing. So we'll take a look at some of the books that he has out now. Centralia is an awesome, gorgeous uh, comic by rising Dutch star, Neil Van Piet. This is his first work. It's a really great sci-fi story. 
there's a world in the future where the sun has gotten so hot that people can't be on the ground. Uh, so they have to run around. There's a lot of conceits that go with that. You know, what is the world that that looks like? Um, and I think you can see by the art that Sean's description of this book as like a Moebius for young adults. A YA Moebius is a really great description of this really gorgeous and like wild, wacky, fun book. The Exile by Eric Creek is a gorgeously illustrated Viking saga of revenge. Eric Creek calls it his Viking Western. It's about a, a guy who's been away on the, the war path and is returning home um, to a, some family troubles that have to be resolved. And this is told in just this amazing, like, kind of three color art style that looks like old woodblock cuts or something. It's absolutely gorgeous book that you've got to pick up. Thanks for following along. Take it away, Jack. You want to see all these books? Smash that subscribe button and the like button and the bell, and then you get them.